Hey, it's Rochelle, and you're listening to Clumsy Theosis, a production of Catholic Answers. Welcome to the place to transform the world by transforming yourself. The Bible. Now that's every Catholic's best friend, right? It's a common stereotype that Catholics don't know their Bibles, and I'll concede to this stereotype a bit. Like, on the whole, we Catholics don't have scripture and verse memorized like our separated Protestant brethren do. But have you ever been to a Catholic Mass? Come on! Through the sacraments, we live out the scriptures. How are we allowed to do such a thing? Some may say it's because Catholicism is rooted in scripture and tradition, and that's true. But on an even more fundamental level, it's because Catholicism is not a religion of the book. We are a religion of the word. The Bible is the word of God, and Jesus is the eternal word of the living God. The written word is available to us to help us to understand and to grow closer to the eternal word. And in order for us to appreciate the living word of God and how the Lord wants to use it to transform us, we have to read our Bibles every day. And that's what I want to get into today. How we can read and pray with the sacred page without being a scripture scholar. And we'll do this by applying the four senses of scripture. Let me tell you, back in the day, this totally changed my scripture game and my prayer life. Before I was aware of the four senses of scripture, I was so afraid of interpreting the Bible passages wrongly that instead of praying with the scriptures and getting to know the Lord through them, really, I was just doing research instead. Like it was all head and no heart. I was reading and studying a book and not the word. And as you can imagine, this isn't exactly spiritually edifying. So as time went on, I prayed with my Bible less and less. According to ancient tradition, there are two senses of scripture, the first being the literal sense and the second being the spiritual sense. Wait a second. I know. Didn't I say that there are four senses of scripture? Yes. And there are because there are three senses that fall under the umbrella of the spiritual sense. These three are referred to as the allegorical sense, the moral sense, and the anagogical sense. That's quite a mouthful, huh? And They do have nicknames, which make them easier to remember and to understand, which is what we want because then we'll be more likely to use them. So yeah, these three spiritual senses plus the literal sense make up the four senses of scripture. So let's start with the spiritual senses. Why? Because I just think that they're a little bit more fun and interesting than the literal sense. So as a whole, they identify realities and events in the Bible which hold the profound possibility of being signs of deeper realities. Like even just saying that gives me goosebumps. When it comes to perceiving deeper realities beyond our earthly one, we need God to reveal these to us. So here's where the Holy Spirit comes in and does his thing. So what does it mean for us to read scripture through the light of Christ? It's knowing that Jesus is God and that he came, died, and rose for the sake of our salvation. This truth sheds a whole new light, get it, on all of scripture, and we're able to find the Christic meaning throughout the Old Testament. And some very obvious examples of this is the Lamb of God. We say that in the Mass. It's very explicit in John's Gospel. We see it in the Synoptic Gospels during the Last Supper. But we can also see it in the Old Testament, in the sacrifices of the Jewish people. And it all now takes on a different, richer meaning because of the light that Christ has shed on it. When we do this, we're participating in the allegorical sense. That's why this sense is sometimes referred to as the Christological sense. Basically, this happens when we identify the signs, prophecies, and any foreshadowing of Christ, which was not explicitly explained. The second spiritual sense is the moral sense. This is not to be confused with ethics. You know, the moral sense does not operate as some kind of prescribed moral code for us, per se. 
It does, however, shape our beliefs and values, which in turn affect our behavior. That's why this sense is sometimes called the behavioral sense. In these moments, when we identify our need for improvement, the Holy Spirit is helping us to recognize our own limited nature. And this humility right here should lead us to prayer, where we seek God's help to become more Christ-like, either in our behavior or in interior growth of love or charity. And I think people do this intuitively when they read scripture. So you know how I mentioned that the moral sense is sometimes called the behavioral sense. Well, it's also called the tropological sense. Yeah, there's three titles for this sense, just so you're aware if you're doing any other sort of research or reading the catechism and you come across it, you know that it's all the same thing. Just putting it out there for you. All right, and so the last of the spiritual senses to be mentioned is the anagogical sense. We've hit the home stretch, so to speak, with regard to the spiritual senses, and that's kind of what this sense is about. See, our attention is drawn to the eschatological realities. The eschatological realities, right? That sounds really intense. Of the end times. It just means it's, you know, the second coming of Christ. The focus here is still a Christic focus, though yet again, viewed from a very different angle. Here, Jesus is a glimpse of what is to come in the new Jerusalem. When we read our Bibles and we're led to see beyond what we're reading to the other side of the veil, what we're experiencing is the scripture's ability to lift our hearts to new mystical heights. In these moments, we have a greater desire for the things of God. And in these moments, we're experiencing the hope of heaven. See, right now I feel like there's like a golden tear coming down my cheek. You know, it just seems so beautiful. And you may have noticed that this sense has a very mystical nature to it. And you're probably going to nod your head along with me when I tell you that this sense, the anagogical sense, is also identified as the mystical sense. So on to the literal sense, which I said previously isn't as fun, but that's not exactly true. I mean, it's exciting in its own way. Like, I enjoy history, solving mysteries and puzzles and all that jazz. You know, I just like learning in general. And all that happens here in the literal sense. As the name suggests, this sense looks for the literal meaning of scripture, not taking every single word literally, but seeking to understand what the human author sought to convey in their writing. We do this, of course, by gathering the basics, you know, the facts about who was writing and to whom, for what reason, what was the context in which they're writing, and what type of writing it actually was. Was it a narrative, a moral exhortation, or some sort of a doctrine? And I know this can kind of sound a little similar to those mini research sessions that I had mentioned previously, but it's different. And the difference is that you do all of this prior to your prayer time. This doesn't take the place of your prayer time. And the catechism is so right by stressing that the rules of interpretation need to be followed, right? Because without this primary level of understanding of the scriptures, we will most likely fall into some sort of error. I mean, how do you think the body of Christ has become so fractured by countless Protestant sects? The Catholic faith is the faith of truth, not some relative, you know, this might be true for you, but something different is true for me type of faith. No, like Jesus doesn't get down like that. However, the fathers also hold that true enlightenment happens when reading the scriptures while under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. And that basically means that all of these details don't need to be mastered in order for us to comprehend the word of God and to move forward through the spiritual senses. And that's really encouraging. So those are the four senses of scripture. They sound very straightforward, pretty simple, but they're total game changers when it comes to reading your Bible. Try it out for at least two weeks. Give it a commitment to do it every day for 10 minutes. And I'm telling you, your prayer time will be lit, you know, like, from the fire of the Holy Spirit. (laughs) Okay, and on that, I'm going to leave you guys. I'm super confident that this will work out great for you. And in future, let's be pals. So if you're new to the podcast, or you just have some commitment issues, and you haven't hit the subscribe button yet, do it. Do it now. Clumsy Theosis is available on all podcast apps. Go ahead, leave us some reviews, some ratings. You can email me at clumsytheosis at catholic.com with all the topics that you just have to know more about. 
or you can stay up to date with the show or with me on Instagram at Clumsy Theosis. And tell your friends. Together, we can transform the world by transforming ourselves. Rochelle, out. Thank you for tuning in this week to Clumsy Theosis. Each week, we explore a topic within the Catholic faith to aid listeners like yourself, as well as yours truly, in the advancement and deepening of the spiritual life and the personal ownership of our relationship with the big guy upstairs and his church. As cliche as it sounds, the world needs you. Become who you were created to be with Clumsy Theosis, the place to transform the world by transforming yourself.